So there's a legendary business story, which I'm not 100% sure if it's, if it's real or if it's a myth or, um, and, and I've heard the story in so many different versions that leads me to believe that it's just a story meant to uh, leave you a lesson of some sort, a life lesson of some sort. So the story is about uh, a printing press that you know, has been in business for, for years, has this really gigantic uh, printing press in the middle of the shop floor, and it almost never goes bad, and one day it just shuts down. And uh, they're, they urgently needed to get it back up because it's a printing press and they print newspapers. So they're looking for technicians, uh, calling around, trying to figure out who's gonna be able to help them with this. And, uh, and they do find one that happens to be a specialist that, that is known to specialize on, on that brand of uh, printing press. And it turns out the guy's pretty local, so the owner of the printing press calls the technician and the guy's there within a couple of hours. And he tells him, here, my friend, uh, you know, we have this issue, we have this printing press, it stopped, we need to start printing tonight. Can you help us? And the technician says, I think I can. I worked on these printing presses for many, many years. I know them very well. And the owner says, will it, will it take you long? And the guy said, no, no, it should be pretty fast. Just, just give me some time. And the technician walks around, looks at, looks at all the angles of the printing press for about five or 10 minutes and then opens up one of the panels and takes out a, takes out a dime from his pocket and turns a screw just a little bit sideways, steps back, turns the machine on, and the machine is up and running and functional again. So, um, so the owner of the company is obviously super happy that, that we got the machine back up and running, and it only took him like 15 minutes to get the whole thing uh, fixed. It actually took him more time to get there than to actually fix it. And the guy says, uh, how, uh, you know, how, how, how much is it? You know, how much do I owe you? And the guy says, oh, that would be $10,000. And the owner of the company is just in shock, right? I mean, $10,000, the guy was here for 15 minutes. The owner of the company said, no, 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 no. Uh, th that's ridiculous, $10,000 is ridiculous. You were only here for 10 or 15 minutes. And the technician says, that's, that's my fee. That's how much I charge to do this work. And the owner of the company gets so mad at him that says, you know what? send me an itemized bill that explains all your costs and exactly how you arrived to that number and then I'm gonna run it through my legal department and see if if I'm gonna pay you. So the technician is a little bit mad but but he technician leaves and then they get the bill and then the bill uh, it's itemized exactly how they asked and it has two lines. Uh, first line said one dollar turning a screw and the other line said $9,999 knowing which screw to turn. And uh, obviously so there's, there's some, uh, some learning behind that and we'll, we'll discuss that uh, in a second. And, uh, but the owner, and this is sort of the extended version of the story, usually the story just stops there because that's the punchline, that's the climax, right? Knowing which screw to turn is what's valuable, not the actual effort of turning the screw. But the extended version of the story, which I, I kind of like the extended version, is the owner of the company calls his legal team and uh, and sends them the, the, the invoice and says, hey, do, do we have a case here? Do, do we have to pay for this bill? And the lawyer says, well, you, you're in luck. I, I, I checked the back history of other court cases and it seems like there's some precedent for, you know, fair commercial practices and it looks like you do have to justify your fee. So it is possible we can win this lawsuit. And, uh, and the owner of the company says, great, you know, uh, you know, let's, let's not pay it. So if, if he sues us, whatever, we, we just won't pay them. And the lawyer, um, who is kind of stepping out of the box said, you know, um, we could win this case, but you, you're still using the same printing press, right? So the guy said, yes. Are you buying a brand new printing press? The guy said, no. Did you have other options when you hired this technician or, or was this pretty much the best one that was out there? The guy said, well, you know what? It was pretty impressive. The guy walked in and he was able to turn a screw and get the printing press going. And the lawyer giving him some real business advice, he says, pay your bill, make friends with that technician, 
because if you need him again, you want him to be happy to come and serve you. And that was that's the end of the extended version of the story. So what the, what does that mean? Why am I talking about that? What, why does this have any any meaning whatsoever? Well, number one is because a lot of us uh, technicians, consultants, professionals, we get really concerned about the effort. You know, can can we justify the effort? You know, when we send the client the bill, or for that matter, we probably shouldn't be sending them the bill. We should price up front, but that's a whole another story. But when we when we price for our services, our clients just want us to solve the problem, and they want us they they want to know what the cost of that solution is, so they can make an informed decision up front. That's it. That's that's the secret of business, right? If if you are a specialist and you're an expert, and you are gonna be the one that actually helps that client's uh, livelihood by solving their problem by fixing uh, whatever situation or issue they've had and you are the best at it or you are really well qualified at it the client will pay they will pay even if they think it's quote unquote unfair like the way this guy said on the story they will pay because having a good knowledgeable technician by your side it's really really valuable but the other really important piece of the story is you have this technician that was able to the, the lights too too bright you have this technician that was able to command the price that for, for the for the most part didn't seem like this uh, owner of this company probably would would not have paid if that was quoted over the phone up front i mean maybe the person just assumed because he he was close by and it only took him less than an hour to fix it this was, wasn't going to be such a big bill so it's possible that Maybe they would have hired the wrong technician in the first place. But the lesson here is you can command the price, the right price, uh, even if it feels higher. And regardless of the effort that you put in there, if you are the one that can solve the issue, if you know how to solve the problem, if you are the specialist. So just wanted to share the story with you while I play with my new stabilizer. So I'm actually working with a DSLR, DSLR camera and I'm uh, kind of playing around, so I am moving the camera around, but should be pretty stable. So, so I'm just doing two for one, uh, testing my new uh, gimbal for my digital camera, and telling you that timeless story that we are told uh, many, many times, and it does touch us as professionals uh, in different ways depending on when we hear it. So, hope you like it. If you have other similar stories like that, I would love to hear them. If you, uh, if you have any thoughts about it. Uh, go ahead and add it in the comments below. Thanks.